Hello everyone and welcome to Sips and Stories. My name is Elizabeth and in today's video I will be discussing my September wrap up. September was an excellent reading month for me. I read a number of really great books. Everything from biography to dystopian to murder mystery and then of course a few excellent middle grade novels. So grab your favorite beverage and join me as we discuss these terrific reads. The first book that I read was The Wright Brothers by David McCullough. I gave this book five out of five stars because it was excellent. This was such an inspiring story and I think it's the perfect book to read in 2020 especially because it just reminded me that no, we are not people that give up. We are people that strive for our dreams, that keep going after our goals. And that is the purpose of living, is to have a dream, follow it, and make the world a better place. So this story is absolutely fantastic. And it's just, it's interesting how these two men, these very shy, humble men that just had a wonderful family, wonderful friends, they were able to unlock the secret that had been baffling mankind for centuries. And once you get to know their family and their characters and their work ethic, you'll understand why. I loved it and I can't recommend it highly enough. The next book that I read is one that I also really, really enjoyed, and that is Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. I mentioned this as well in my library TBR. And I loved it. So basically what everyone is saying about this book is that if you like Agatha Christie, you should read this book because it pays homage to Agatha Christie and other classic mystery writers. So, well, I adored this book and you're basically getting two books for the price of one. So the first half of the novel is a classic murder mystery and you are following the book along with the book's editor, Susan Ryland. You're just reading the manuscript right through. And then the second half of the book is Susan Ryland's story of how she is trying to solve a mystery and figure out what happened to the book's author. And it's so fantastic. I loved it. And just the way that Anthony Horowitz was able to mimic Agatha Christie's style, I thought he did such an excellent job, including making fun of himself as a mystery writer. Because if you know Agatha Christie, she did that all the time. She didn't take herself so seriously and that's why her books are terrific. And that's why this book is terrific. I gave it four out of five stars. The next book that I read is Switching Gears just a little bit and that is Severance by Ling Ma. This was really good. So I don't think I need to say too much about this book. It's been hugely popular. I'm sure a lot of booktubers have heard about it. Just in case you haven't, it is a story about a flu pandemic that originates in China and it's a dystopian novel. It's basically an apocalyptic story. And we are following a young woman named Candace as she is living out her life in New York City by herself as everyone is fleeing New York. And the main thing I liked about this book, it, it wasn't so much the story or the characters or the plot, it was Ling Ma's writing. So if you like satirical novels, especially social satire, you are going to love this book because Ling Ma is taking a look at our culture, especially from the viewpoint of young people. But this book is marketed to millennials, but I think anyone at any age can read it. It just is talking about our society in general and the themes of capitalism and globalization. And it's utterly fascinating because I think her overall point is, you know, we can go ahead and blame big governments. We can blame big business all we want for the world's problems. But at the end of the day, it's us as individuals that are making each of these choices each and every day. We are contributing to this. And so what she was saying, it just was so prophetic and it really relates to 2020. And it does have a hopeful message. So I, a lot of people didn't see it, it that way, but I did, and it's extremely funny. So just, you're gonna have a good time with this one. I loved it. The writing was so clever, so interesting. I gave it four out of five stars. The next book, I returned to the library, I don't have it with me, but is Chronicles of a Death Foretold by Gabrielle Garcia Marquez. Another fantastic book, excellent writing. And I first read Grab Your Old Garcia Marquez back in college, um, 100 Years of Solitude. I fell in love with his writing and his magical realism and his characters and the richness of his language. This book, you're getting all that for 
half the price basically you're getting a lot of bang for your buck with this book so for being a short novel of just 120 pages this one was really dense really really interesting it's basically a mystery but not a mystery about two brothers pedro and pablo who vow to avenge their sister um, and kill a man named Santiago who has deflowered their sister and ruined her chances of a, making a suitable marriage. And so what they do is they basically tell the whole town they're going to kill him and no one does really very much to stop him. And it's really, really fascinating, just the psychology of the characters and the townspeople and just why people do what they do, even horrific things. I mean, I loved it. And there's a number of ways you can unpack this novel as well. Also, it'll keep you guessing to the very end. So I kept reading it and thinking, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And then I finished it and I still kept thinking about it. I mean, what happened? What happened? So speaking of Agatha Christie, don't, don't expect a mystery that's all wrapped up in a nice, neat bow. Expect something that you are going to sink your teeth into and be discussing long after you finish this book. I also love the female characters in this book. So Gabriel Garcia Marquez gets in trouble a little bit. A lot of his characters are very misogynistic. So I just take that with a grain of salt, considering the, the time period he wrote these novels, the characters he's talking about. But he offsets it by creating really, really strong female characters as well. So Angela, the one of the main characters, is really interesting in this book, as is the mother of Santiago. Um, some servants and then it's one of those books that has nuns and prostitutes as well so it's really fascinating I loved it and I gave this book four out of five stars moving on let's discuss some excellent middle grade books that I read this month starting with Two Night Owl from Dogfish by Holly Goldberg Sloan and Meg Wolitzer so this is one of my last books that I read for summer and I loved it so basically how they market this book is it is a gay version of The Parent Trap. So I know, right? That sounds amazing. And it was amazing. And I'm so excited to see that there's more LGBTQ literature for young people. So I've been seeing a lot of LGBTQ for adults and young adults. But this book is 100% middle grade. The main characters are around 11 or so. And I just loved this book so much. So it is about two single men, two single fathers, I should say. They meet at a business conference, they fall in love, and they want to send their daughters to the same summer camp so that the daughters can bond, be friends, and they can all be this one big happy family. Well, the daughters, Bet and Avery, have different ideas about that and they end up writing a series of emails to each other and vowing that they're never going to speak to each other when they go to camp so it kind of turns into an enemies to friends story just like the parent trap and it's adorable i loved it so much and i love the overall message that it doesn't matter what your family looks like who's raising you moms dads two dads mom dad grandparents aunts uncles as long as you have someone in your life that cares about you, that loves you, you're blessed. So I liked the message of this story. It also is written in a series of emails. So it reminds me a lot of a middle grade version of Where'd You Go Bernadette? And it's very funny, it's very quirky. I gave this book four out of five stars. The next book that I read is one that I'm just finishing up this evening, and that is The Girl That Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valente. I had mixed feelings about this book. I'm still about 50 pages to the end, so I might have some different opinions, but I think I'm gonna give this one three out of five stars. This is a book that I thought I was absolutely going to love, and it was hard work, I won't lie. So I think what was happening in this book is it was just too much for my imagination to handle. It was just too much description, too many quirky situations, too many unusual situations, unusual characters and characteristics. I had a really difficult time following through with this story. On the plus side though, I will say Catherine M. Valente's writing is beautiful, it's fantastic, it's really witty, it's really clever, very sharp. Um, so I really loved her writing style, but I wasn't just a huge fan of all these descriptive details. It was, it was too much to handle. Um, so this is one of those books that I think is very polarizing. Some people love it, some people are a little like, 
uh, like I was. But I do think that if you are at all curious about it, try it for yourself, see if you like it. I just don't anticipate continuing with this series. And I gave it three out of five stars. The next book that I read was The Parker Inheritance by Varian Johnson. This book is excellent. It is basically a middle grade mystery story about two young children, Candace and Brandon, who are searching for a hidden inheritance in their small southern town of Lambert, South Carolina. And they're following all these clues that were left in a letter to Candace's grandmother. And Candace's grandmother has died and she's asked Candace through a series of puzzles and clues to continue her search and figure out where this inheritance is. And so Candace and Brandon take up the challenge. And while they do, they end up in uncovering some history about Lambert's past and the, the past of their city where they currently live. And they unveil some uncomfortable truths about racial segregation, Jim Crow, and some very painful stories that happened in their town. And so half the book is set in the modern day with Candace and Brandon, and then half of the book goes back into the 1950s and when these situations took place. And it's really wonderful. There is a beautiful love story in this book, and it just captured my imagination. However, there is one thing you should know about this book. Varian Johnson does everything except literally tell you to go read The Westing Game. And all the characters in this book are obsessed with the, the Westing game. This book itself gets compared to the Westing game. And Brandon tells Candace, you need to read the Westing game if we're going to solve this. So guess what book I read next? Yep, you guessed it, The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin. So make sure you have both books on hand if you're going to take up the Parker inheritance. And I was a little nervous about reading the Westing game as an adult. I read this back in sixth grade and it was my all time favorite book as a kid. It's one of those books that made me fall in love with reading. It made me fall in love with mysteries in particular. I really cite this book and Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None as being the books that inspired me to love mystery. So I was nervous about reading it again as an adult. But I shouldn't have been nervous because it was excellent. And you know when you read something as an adult or you watch a kid's movie as an adult and you pick up on certain things that kids wouldn't pick up on? There's a ton of that happening in this. I loved it. And the main thing I realized is that Ellen Raskin, she basically wrote this book for herself. She didn't dumb down her writing for children. She just wanted to write a fun mystery story that happened to be geared towards kids. But there are some situations that only adults would understand. And I love the characters, especially the female characters. So of course, Turtle is my favorite, but the, just reading about Angela in particular, I had forgotten about Angela. Her story is fantastic. Judge Ford, Mrs. Wexler, Sadell Polanski. I mean, who doesn't love Sadell Polanski? I loved this one. And this one has one of the best endings of any mystery story, adult or children alike. And it's one of those endings where you just want to like randomly burst into applause at the end. I love this so much. So there you have it, everyone. Thank you for joining for my September wrap up. Oh, these books were so fantastic. I can't recommend them to you highly enough. I hope that you check out one or two of them, or if you've read any of them, comment below, tell me what your thoughts are, because I loved all these books. Thank you so much and have a terrific day.